Real estate is another area that we really focus on. A lot of people move out here, they purchase properties and uh, they purchase homes. They, they, we have a lot of uh, people who, in setting up their businesses, also purchase uh, properties for their business. And even if you go with a, a real estate agent who is knowledgeable and know their stuff, there may be some uh, implications or things afterwards. Sometimes there are clashes with, uh, with the parties, the buyer or the sellers. might be a mis misunderstanding that, that happened, just so happens. So when you need to go beyond like the arbitration level, what do you do? Jeffrey Hacker, here serving Santa Clarita for over 30 years, also a real estate specialist. Good morning. Morning. Now, this is a situation, a lot of times we talk about, uh, you know, residential real estate is pretty much it is what it is. However, there are times when something happens. And, and in the contract, there's the thing about you can either go for arbitration and maybe try and get it worked out between an arb arbiter. But other times, it gets a little beyond that. Or maybe the real estate agent uh, performs some sort of fraud or something like that. There are all kinds of uh, uh, reasons why someone would need a real estate attorney. And not just on the back end of if there is a court case or some sort of a legal action pending, right? Oh, uh, unfortunately, absolutely. Uh Buying property today has become very complicated, uh, even though there are forms that are used by the California Association of Realtors that are pretty good. Uh, they don't cover necessarily every contingency. Most of the issues that crop up are what's known as disclosure issues by uh, somebody who buys a house and then discovers something that they feel uh, the seller should have disclosed to them <clears throat> or feel that the realtor acted improperly. Uh, the laws uh, in California as it relates to realtors only hold realtors to a visual inspection or disclosing what's actual knowledge as opposed to a seller of real estate who has to disclose any and all material facts including whether or not somebody's really a nuisance neighbor next door. It's based, The standard is basically anything that would affect the desirability uh, of somebody who wants to make the purchase. So uh, that's on the, just the uh, residential side. So exactly. mo most of the problems I see are the disclosure issues and also property line disputes and disputes amongst neighbors, whether it's a party wall or, um, you know, overhanging trees. That's typically the types of problems. That seems to be a big thing. I, I've noticed, I mean, even looking at, at other like blog sites and stuff like that, lawyers, everybody seems to have something about an overhanging tree and how that could, that could just, just cause problems, you know, with, with neighbors. It's interesting. It wreaks havoc sometimes. Exactly. So, uh, but let's, uh, hopping over to the business side, is, is it kind of a similar, similar or, or, uh, from a disclosure standpoint or are there other complications? Well, uh, the laws are different. Uh, regarding uh, disclosure on the business side than on the uh, residential side. Uh, there's a statute that's known as Civil Code Section 1102, which mandates that a seller of residential real estate of four units or less has to disclose these material facts. So you've got a law right on the books that governs this. That There's no similar law that governs that, per se, on the business side. Business side is um, controlled by what we call common law. So common law, whether or not um, common law principles of contract or fraud. And I try not to sound like a lawyer, but yes. that's what I. <laughs> but I play one on TV as that's I right. like to joke. So uh, it, it's a little. It's a different world, a little bit. And for instance, and so therefore, uh, it's, it's treated very differently. But in, when you're buying uh, from the business side, the most important thing is to do your due diligence and do your investigation. Most business contracts will say you're buying property, for instance, on an as-is, where-is basis, meaning you're taking it as it is. So it's really important to do your homework conduct what we call due diligence activities, uh, and that includes uh, conducting an, a thorough environmental investigation of the property to make sure it's not contaminated, make sure that proper environmental environmental reports uh, have been done. Typically on a building, you're, there's going to be at least what we call a phase one environmental report, which typically will come back clean. If it doesn't, uh, then then you're off to the races. Exactly. And so that's very different on the, on the as-is business side, where is Whereas uh, in a residential 
real estate, you do have contingencies that may provide the opportunity for the seller to make repairs based on requests and you don't have this. So it's interesting. So lots to know, and uh, especially from the business side, or if there are situations, uh, uh, especially uh, disputes or things with between sellers or between neighbors, uh, Hacker Law Group is the one attorney to contact, the, the group to contact, in service here in Santa Clarita since 1983? Yes. Amazing. Also, hackerlawgroup.com, phone number? 259-6800. Outstanding.